In neoclassical economics, the firm is treated almost like a black box. There are inputs and there are outputs. The inputs might be machinery, technology, workers, inventory, capital. The outputs are goods and profit. However, as Ludwig von Mises reminds us, economics is not only the study of resource allocation, it is also the study of human action. The firm is not some amorphous body, it is made up of individuals, real people, making decisions and acting in the real world. In this video, I want to look inside the firm and understand its various functions. The first function is that of the capitalist, the owner of the firm, the ultimate decision maker, the residual claimant of profits and interest. Now, a pure capitalist, that is someone who owns a firm and literally does nothing else but sit back and count their money, is rare, but the function is theoretically possible. Here, for example, Murray Rothbard assumes an evenly rotating economy, in other words, an economy in perfect equilibrium without uncertainty, and one can see the interest that would accrue to the capitalists at each stage of production. Now, because this is an evenly rotating economy, the 17 ounces of gold uh, in interest would be spent on consumer goods and pumped back into the economy ad infinitum. But you can worry about this in your own time. Second, there is the managerial function or the manager. This is someone who coordinates the firm. They maximize profits and they are almost always a paid employee. If the manager coordinates the firm well, it will make profits. If the manager gets this wrong, the firm will make losses. Strictly speaking, the pure manager would be restricted to executing a business plan, communicating a corporate culture, bookkeeping, structuring incentives, limiting opportunism, and so on and so forth. However, in reality, the manager will almost always be making decisions under uncertainty, which is how they can get things wrong and therefore make a loss. More on this in a moment. Third, there is the entrepreneur. This is someone who bears uncertainty, discovers profits and reallocates capital. The most crucial aspect of the entrepreneur is that they bear uncertainty. That is, they spot opportunities for profit. That is, problems which the market has yet to solve. They then reallocate capital to that end. If they are a good entrepreneur, then profits will result from this reallocation. If they are a bad entrepreneur, they misjudge the opportunity and the reallocation will result in losses. Finally, there is the worker. This is, this is any paid employee uh, who exchanges their knowledge and labor for money. Wages are determined by their discounted rates of marginal utility. I will not be talking about the worker much further in this video, but if you want to see how to calculate the discounted rate of marginal productivity, see my video Pricing a Cup of Coffee, which you will find in AA's Core Lessons. Now, let's get back to the capitalist, the entrepreneur and the manager. What makes this confusing is that anyone can be any of these functions, or indeed all of them at the same time. In fact, it is common to find that the entrepreneur will also be the capitalist and the manager and an employee all rolled into one. But these are quite different functions and it is necessary to isolate them. For example, the entrepreneur might have an idea uh, for uh, a profit-making opportunity, but not have any capital. She could then attract capitalists who invest in her idea. Now, actually, what is happening in this process is that the money being allocated by the capitalist to the new idea is being drained from an old industry. Every penny spent on the new idea is a penny not spent on the old industry. Hence, the entrepreneur is reallocating the capital. Somewhat confusingly, in this scenario, each of the capitalists are also partly acting as entrepreneurs since they are fronting risk. Anytime uncertainty is involved, the person is in some way fulfilling the entrepreneurial function. So, in this case, these are capitalist entrepreneurs. However, once this capital has been raised, the entrepreneur who spotted the opportunity for profits might not necessarily be the best person to run the firm, and hence they may hire a manager. But the manager himself is also making decisions under uncertainty. How many employees should he recruit? How much should each worker be paid? These are all very difficult decisions to make, especially before any sales have been made. Once there is data on consumer sales, the manager's life is made easier and risk is reduced. 
However, it is never eliminated. And so in reality, the pure manager is rare. And we mostly see manager entrepreneurs at the top of organizations, typically called a CEO. However, it is important to distinguish between these four functions, the capitalist, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the worker, because it is so rarely understood, especially by those on the political left who have read Karl Marx, who famously thought that workers were, quote, being exploited, and who collapsed the other three functions into that of the capitalist fat cat, who literally did nothing. As they found in the Soviet Union, it is virtually impossible to run an economy with only workers. First, Lenin realized that he also needed managers. But since decision making is always made under uncertainty, they also needed entrepreneurs and capitalists to reallocate capital to more productive ends. And this is why innovation was so low in the Soviet Union and why they continuously had to steal ideas from the Western world. I hope you've learned something. Now get out. And a very special thanks to The Crimson Satyr, Sir Percy Blakeney, Andrew, Binary Surfer, Hornito Jones, Glenn Raymond, Kuzga, Ginger Bill, Michael Burt, Time Stealer, Tragic Vision, Blake Barrows, Holy Spatula, The Ambivalent Onion, and Edward Darrow.